If you've heard of yoga, karma, and meditation, knowingly or unknowingly, you've been in touch with a certain book. That book is India's eternal message of spiritual wisdom and philosophy. Gandhi considered it his guiding light in life, and so does Will Smith today. And the list of thinkers who've been influenced by it is endless. Thoreau, Herman Hesse, Emerson, Carl Jung, Nikola Tesla. These are just some. Okay, what's the name of the book? It's called the Bhagavad Gita, the Song of the Supreme. The Gita, as it's known, is part of the philosophical conclusion of the epic Mahabharata. And while the content is said to be timeless, it was put into writing 5,000 years ago by Vyas, the original author of the Vedas and Upanishads. Now the language of the Gita is Sanskrit, and the underlying theme is the science of life, the science of understanding and realizing the Supreme. Now let me give you an example of the scientific approach the Gita gives to self-realization. To distinguish the self from the body, Krishna, the speaker of the Gita, gives the following example. And I begin by quoting the Sanskrit. And the translation is as follows. As the embodied soul continually passes in this body from boyhood to youth to old age, the soul similarly passes into another body at death. A sober person is not bewildered by such a change. We all experience that throughout life we're the same person, but we also experience that our body is always changing. And so the conclusion is that we, the unchanging person, are different from the changing body. We're the conscious soul that resides in the body. Now that's the kind of logical and relevant methodology with which the Gita guides its readers to self-realization, God-realization, and to realization of the meaning of life. Now of the many commentaries on the Bhagavad Gita, the most popular, the most widely read, and the most comprehensive, translated into 75 languages, is that of A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami. He's the founder of the Hare Krishna movement. The Gita is not a long book. It only contains 700 verses, but in the words of author and philosopher Aldous Huxley, it's the most systematic statement of spiritual evolution of endowing value to mankind. Now, I first read the Gita in 1971, and that was 50 years ago. And when I began to read it, I thought, wow, this is what I've been looking for. And as I continued to read it, I decided to make the teachings of the Gita my life, and to make my life giving the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita to others. So if you're looking for truth and real meaning in life, then the Bhagavad Gita needs a place in your library and a place on your reading list. Then you too will find that it quickly takes a place in your heart and a place in your life.